Sweet. Yeah. As I said, I will just explore the rest of this part here before we go to Riker. Who sounds like a very charming guy. From the things we've gathered so far. Hmm. That of Angelic statue. I wonder if we can use it somewhere. I mean, probably. Ruler of a rotting kingdom. <laughs> Here lies the body of Riona Lee, drowned in the flood of 83. A passing drifter tried to save her, and himself was dragged under. Here lies the body of Riona Lee. I feel that's a flood pun. A passing drifter tried Wasn't that to a singer, or is it? Was dragged under. Is that a reference to a song? I don't know. Not really well versed in music of the eighties. Too heavy. Come on, Lucy. Stronger. Ooh. I really like the chicken claw scrolls. Never have enough chicken claw in a fight. What are you even this creature's digging like here? A silent monk. Dark magic at work. Which makes me wonder if we could have seen also like some spirits up around, around the um, silent monks. But I mean probably not, because they're spirit um, and their source, which is kind of connected apparently, but absorb, right? Mm -hmm. How horrible to live just like out of your body and you always just have to observe what your former self, I know, I don't know, is doing. Dum -dum -dum -dum. I also really like that Tarquin actually got banned from the graveyard. But I mean, we're just walking around, stealing stuff, looking into every coffin. No one bets an eye. Stone Garden. Oops. We were picked up by spies. That was no mm. glory and no point to it either. Lots of ravens. Oh, do you remember the statue? To our people. It looks a lot like the Umbral statue was like blessing the possessed dwarves. The Queen of Pearls. Duna's mistress, I would say. Interesting. That like a memorial for dwarves? It looks like that. We died glorious. In life we are Earth's caretakers. In death. We are we the skies. Up by spies. That was no glory and no point to it either. I wonder if you can tell us something more. Not much of a landlubber, but sometimes I get no choice in the matter. Hmm. Besides, there's business to take care of. Apparently not. That inspiration. We're an example. Hmm. Also kind of weird to just leave the bodies of the deceased on top of the shrine or whatever it is. Hmm. You're very loud, Featherfall. We die. The eagle glowers at you balefully, with eyes like shiny little buttons. One manicured and beribboned claw shoots forth to claim the stringy offal before him. Stretching his neck forward, he peers closely at you. Pretty eyes. Eyes that see far. The eagle's own eyes glitter with avarice. Hmm. I don't know, I hope you're not hung too hungry, Featherfall. And Lavender decides to distract him from his, your, from his eyes. Yeah, I have to remember to change the perspective <laughs> from his eyes by admiring his fancy ribbons. Hmm. Master tied them on. Pretty, pretty ribbons. Match my pretty claws. Match your pretty eyes. Yeah, how about you talk less about my eyes? Peck, peck, peck. The eagle pecks free some choice lump of gristle from deep within the corpse. He swallows it whole, dark blood dripping from his beak and matting the fluffy feathers at his throat. Master died, but Master told me what to do. 
all my life told me you are what you eat. So I do. I will become the master. Unless you are not the new master, are you? It's really interesting because looking at the portrait, it looks a lot like a vulture. But the bird looks way more like a raven, right? Hmm. But I mean, if you are what you eat, and if you tell that to a vulture, you are a corpse, <laughs> I guess. Hmm. You know, you're already your own master, free and strong. But if you seek a friend, so do I. Nice. Yay, a vulture friend. Oh, cute. I am my own master, for the master is within me. I will go with you if you become a master too. Nice, another companion. Hmm. I kind of didn't think it through that we have to eat part of his master. Then again, we're playing an elf, so I guess that's just an issue for me and not for Lavender. There. Lavender plucks for the sinew or two of the rotting entrails of the bird's former master and takes a bite. You chew it for what seems like forever, yet the texture does not change in your mouth. Tough uh. yet moist, leathery yet slippery. As an elf, you were used to eating flesh, but this, this is disgusting. Oh boy. I mean... Looking at the last few episodes, we ate Void Touched Mead, we ate the Heart of a Void Woken. I don't know. I think some of those things could be worse than this dwarf carcass. Sometimes you really wonder about how you make choices in life. Sometimes, like now. I kind of feel judged. <laughs> the eagle hops from claw to claw, peering up at you with a berserk and bird like excitement. See? Feel it? The power! <laughs> Tries not to vomit. <laughs> we were picked up by spies. That was no glory and no point to really. But I mean, we want a friend, so let's go along. And Lavender pounds his chest and claims, mm, Yeah, I, I feel the power of your master flowing, flowing through me. A hacking core breaks free from his ebony beak. Those little button eyes seem to twinkle in the gloom. Yes, kidney, good for courage, good uh. for warrior. You will fight well, now master's blood runs within you. I don't even want to imagine how a kidney of a rotting dwarf tastes. Featherfall is with you. Together, we go together from here. All the things we do for companions. Featherfall hops eagerly onto your shoulder and digs his claws in deep. He pecks your cheek in what could charitably be called an affectionate manner. Blood drips from the wound. At least he didn't go for your eyes. <laughs> what did we do? Ah, summon condor. It was neither vulture nor raven, but a condor? Oh well. Hmm. And of course it's a summon spell, so pretty useless for us at least. No oh, well. We, we got were it. Picked up by spies. That was no glory and no point I mean, to it either. We also could have just talked to the master first, so let's do we that now. Are an the spirit is dressed in tattered ceremonial garb. Eagle feathers tangle in his beard, and bird droppings decorate his robes. He surveys the circling flock with evident satisfaction. And now there are eagle feathers? How many different kinds of birds are they? My faithful eagles work still. They know their duty. They need me not. This one definitely wasn't an eagle. But I see my dearest Featherfall now has his claws in you. I'm glad you'll take him from here. For my flesh lives on in him now, and my blood will know what it is to fly. You are also a very interesting dude, aren't you? You know, doesn't it hurt to see your liver being clawed apart? Hurt? Dear me, no. All I felt was pride. My feather fall knew just how to slice and just what to chew. 
I don't know how to comment that. Sounds like father's pride, but in a very weird way. He ate to free me, to free this spirit from its earthly ties. With each peck, I grew closer to the Hall of Echoes. And now I must wait for some lesser creature to ingest the rest of me. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess thank you for training Featherfall. Discipline. That's all he needs. Discipline and the flesh of the recently deceased. I mean, we do leave quite the trail of corpses, so I guess we can provide. And I can tell you'll be able to give him plenty of both. Forget not, my blood also runs within you now. I've no need of it anymore. The halls call me at last. That's not creepy at all. Then again, we just ate a part of him. Should we eat more? Biting deep into the rotting flesh, your senses are assailed with a rank odor of meat long past its prime. Your memory wavers and becomes not your own, but the memory of one who led the most solitary of lives. You see myriad wings flapping, your hand scattering birdseed. You hear the screeching of eagles, the tearing of flesh. All of your life is centered on this place, this pedestal of death. All of your life is dedicated to feeding your eagles the meat of your dearly departed people. Hmm. Interesting job. We are an inspiration to our people. Her voice also seems very familiar. We're an example. Well, let's talk about them last, I think. Watching the birds pick your body clean is almost soothing. At least you know you're doing some good for a creature. Okay. And it means that elf ain't getting his claws on my corpse. Lavender shoots a curious glance. An elf is after your body. Not mine specifically, but he creeps from grave to sepulchre, taking what he wants, whatever he wants. Hmm. I wonder what Riker is really doing here. I mean, doing very weird experiments with the um, grave keepers, with the mass servants. But also necromancy. Hmm. A grim expression passes across her face as she looks out over the graveyard. The dead don't rest easy in this garden, not by half. But who exactly is the elf? He lives in the big house by the gate. I ain't about to wander up and ask for a name, mind you. The less I see of him, the happier I'll rest. I think we should definitely pay him a visit and find out what's going on there. You watch yourself. There's a voice whispering promises to the dead around here. Word is that they'll be walking about with flesh on their bones again. If they send you to the Hall of Echoes. Hmm. That's kind of familiar, right? I mean, we already heard about people trying to kill us. And also the corrupted um, ancestor tree, the elven ancestor tree, also was tasked with killing us, right? I wonder who wants us dead. I mean, to be precise, I wonder who else also wants us dead. Can actually just revive people. I mean, Alexander wants us killed. The Lone Wolves wants want us killed. Hmm. Well, what did you do? Why would anyone want me dead? You're God woken, ain't you? You've a certain something about your aura. It's interesting that more and more people can just sense that. I wonder if that's also changing with you being able to just channel more souls. Don't ask me why. But someone out there's got it in for you and everyone like you. Mm. Two dwarven spirits at loggerheads. I, I recognize the lass. Ooh. The royal guard had come to Bon Neffin. Right on the sea. The poor, they were disappearing off the streets. The last spoke out. The guard wanted her silent. Mm -hmm. And of course, Levener reaches into the argument. 
and shares their memories with Beast. In a flash, you are both of them, brother and sister. Your feminine side is a rebel, rising up against the tyrannical queen. Uh, Your masculine side is a royalist, loyal to the monarch he loves. Conflicts in the Dwarven Kingdom. As the brother, you rescue your sister from the pikes of the royal guard. Together, you flee across the sea to the melting pot of Driftwood and Reaper's Coast. But in Driftwood, you visit the lizard. The lizard? Uh, Meister? Yeah, we're all curious from time to time. I don't blame him a bit. Sometimes you've got to let loose the beast. Oh, are they talking about the lizard prostitute? You are the sister, and you know that something is wrong. Yeah. You climb the stairs to rescue your brother, and find him fighting for his life against the dwarves who would rob him. Oh. Both of you die. Oh, great. Damn it. Damn it all to hell. Just kids, both of them. And they wanted us there too. Great people. But your killers do right by their fellow dwarves, and bring you here to lay you to rest. As spirits, you fight for eternity. One convinced that the queen is a tyrant, the other that your treason was wrong. I mean, just knowing that she wants to use death folk for whatever mean and evil plan, she seems quite like a tyrant. I want to say something trite, like, can't they just get along? But I know it's not so easy. Nothing is. Especially doing what you think is right. And I mean, we also know that Beast is definitely against the queen. And Lavender decides to settle with her sister. You know, you have to stand up for what you believe in. You see clearly then. He stood up for her. She stood up for everybody. It's the true measure of a heart. How you treat not those closest to you, but those you've never even met. His was big, but hers was bigger. Mm -hmm. The sister smiles. She feels vindicated. Her brother still does not agree. The rebellion was a disaster. The rebellion was a mistake that cost them their lives. Then again, it wasn't the rebellion which cost both of them their lives. In the end, it was those mean dwarven thugs trying to rob people. Hmm. I guess they will have this argument for all eternity. Oh well. So many ravens. Condors, eagles, whatever. What's this? I found something. Hmm. A curious angelic statue. I'm just gonna put some markers here, because at least for the moment we're not going to leave this area. The plinth of the statue bears a series of deep circular scratches upon its stone. The statue can be rotated. Oh, and look at the other statue, it's missing its hat. And we have that hat. I'm not really sure where they have to face, but let's just rotate it. The statue rotates. The sculpture looks impossibly heavy, yet turns with little effort. The statue rotates with little resistance. I don't know, should they face each other or both face away or something? The statue rotates with little resistance. I've spotted something. The headless statue looms over you. Its plinth bears the same rotation scratches as its counterpart. Let's see if we even can turn it without the hat. The statue doesn't nope. move, no matter how much force you apply. Let's try repairing it. Oh no. We have to find the hat. Ah, there it is. Nice. Both facing away. Both the correct way. Uh, Losa. Yeah, not too well, but I mean, we were around, we had the hat, so it's okay. Hmm. What's this? I found something. Spirit of Vilns Creever. Who are you? Here lieth Jaffa, first name unknown, and of no further use. Vilnix Creever. Almost hmm. sounds like a lizard name, but here... The you there! Help me, please! Hmm. What's the matter? 
Some thoughtless fool buried me in this grave to be left as fodder for the worms. I can't be at peace in a place like this. I have to be put to rest according to lizard tradition. Ah, uh, in the fire probably, right? The eternal fire mm. burns in the lizard quarter of the cemetery. I beg you. Cast my remains into the fire. Set my spirit free. I will never know peace otherwise. I mean, someone is asking us to dig up a grave. Of course we do that. No need for persuasion. Not the first time, not the last time. That lizard spirit, just as he said. We could also just eat the leg. But I think he wouldn't be too happy about that. Okay, we have to later just have a look around here. But first, let's go and, well, not bury him, but burn him. If it makes him happy. Boop. Interesting that there's just a lag left. Is that enough? You have done me Ready a great service, friend. Now, the Hall of Echoes beckons. No problem. Ooh. Um, oh, peace of mind. Also can actually cure some uh, quite mean afflictions. Like Chant. Really bad, especially if you have uh, multiple party members who are afflicted. Ah, I remember this place. Here rests Timus Anchoret. Ever may he look out upon the woods he loved so dearly. Here rests Timus Anchoret. Ever may he look out upon the woods he loved so dearly. I was just thinking where's the pond, but maybe I just don't recognize it. Hmm, a talking grassy pile. A mind of this magnitude shouldn't be cursed to live like this. Can you, can you dig me up? You know, it's rather unusual for me to talk to a grassy pile, so who are you? Well, I used to be... Wait, who did I used to be? <laughs> Existential crisis. I can say with confidence who I am now, at least. A thinker. The likes of which you've never known and never will. Hmm. Alright, but I don't want any funny business, alright? Don't worry. There's nothing funny about me. You're to uh, talking grassy pile for starters. Funny enough. The skeleton tries to brush mm. the dirt from his clattering bones, then Crispin. frowns. The moistest bits are still stuck in his cracks and crevices. Existential haze. Okay. Kind of fear that. Nothing can do as much harm as an awareness of the entropy of all existence. You get extremely high resistances. Um, I wouldn't say they're extremely high, but well, you do you. Thanks. You're probably looking for a reward, mm. but I haven't got much. Except, you know, the wisdom of the ages. Yeah. He pokes a finger against his ossified head. I'm a bit of a philosopher, you see. Not much else to be, what with all that thinking time. Everyone needs a hobby, even the undead. Hmm, about this wisdom, maybe you can share some. Oh, but I don't just go around giving knowledge away like a, a common medium. Hmm. Which is sad. The skeleton pauses and sighs, then straightens his spine with a clatter. A soul bond will settle it. A battle of wits. Then the cosmos itself will decide who can better face the truth of our own essence, me or you. A weak soul may not survive the bond. What is a soul bond? But I'm sure 
you'll be just fine. Um, this sounds rather ominous. So, what does this soul bond entail? Oh, it's easy. We link up souls and share our innermost beliefs. Almost trivial. Think of it like an innocent little duel. The winner remains comfortable with their personal truths. So, one of us dies. The loser? Well... It doesn't really sound like a fun... use of your free time. Lavender cocks his head. Now you're saying this battle could prove fatal to me? Battle is dangerous, is it not? I find it to be true anyway, even when you're battling your own mortality. The angst can prove terminal to the weak-willed. Dude, I think you should work on your conversation skills if... I don't know, any exchange ends with either your death or the death of someone else. But I mean, we're in for the adventure, so... Hmm, a chance to show up, there's no at all. I do accept. Enthusiastically. Oh, how fun. <laughs> Just touch this bone on my ribcage here, right over where my heart would be, if... Well, you know. I like how dry he says, oh how fun, if we weren't just heading into a battle which just one of us survives. You reach for the rib in question, but nothing feels different. Not until you try to pull your finger away and it remains glued to the bone. Concern. All right, mister. Deep thought. First up, our purpose in life. I say it's to accumulate knowledge. Pretty great answer, eh? <laughs> Can you do better than that? Really awesome. His jaws clack together in a show of self-assurance. At least, if I remember correctly, you need to have like a very specific combination of tags on your character, and you have to choose always the tech answers. But I mean, we'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Try to pull your finger away. I mean, in character, you know, I think life's true purpose is to love others as passionately as you can. You question your response the moment it leaves your lips. Mm. Your entire body shivers anxiously as you wonder, what is this life's true meaning? I wonder if it's actually like a battle of wits, or if it isn't rather like a battle of confidence. <laughs> you mm. poor, precious, pathetic thing. That's what happens when you gaze into an unseasoned soul. Let's see if you can do better this time. I just saved you. Tell me, Sammy Smarty Pants. Is there such a thing as free will? I say no. The gods guide our every move. I dare you to outsmart me now. I mean, especially us personally, we are guided quite closely by gods, aren't we? Especially with, well, a god deep within ourselves. You know, I think we are limited only by our imaginations. There are no outside bounds on where we might go or what we might accomplish. How could I have been so simple when the truth is so vast? I wonder that myself. Well, I won't let you outshine me again. The skeleton hangs his head low, then yanks it upwards again. Is there a difference between right and wrong? The truth is that there is not. Only action and consequence. <laughs> oh ho! I got you there. I mean... Doesn't, like, every culture and, in the end, every person has, like, a difference, like, a different moral code about right and wrong? It seems quite simple from him. Now, and basically our scholar answers also the same. You know, every culture through history has established its own code of ethics. Within those codes, right and wrong are strongly defined. You feel the bond break between your finger and the skeleton. You pull your hand quickly back to your side. Let's hope that was enough. The truth of your final answer momentarily calms you, but it is not enough to ease the inner pain ripping through your mind, soul and body. The pressure builds and builds. But we won two out of three arguments. Such a pity. Oh, come on. 
Hmm. Well. I would have thought that just succeeding two out of three times would be enough. Apparently it's not. Hmm. And also weird, I mean we could use mystic ones and we could use scholar ones. Uh, so yeah, Fane has the same ones. I wonder... I wonder if someone of our companions could actually beat him. Let's try it. We don't have anything else to do, do we? Hmm. Do you ever he pokes yes, a yes, few? Yes. found one right here. Hmm. Spent centuries... Be oh, but I... The skeleton. A soul. But I'm sure you'll be just... Oh, how... You re... All right. His jaws clack together in a show of self-assurance. Uh -huh. At least the first one we can answer. Um, just to repeat the question. All right, Miss Deep Thoughts. First up, our purpose in life. They say it's to accumulate knowledge. Pretty good answer, huh? Can you do better than that? And Losa just chuckles. <laughs> Joy is the greatest of goods, and there's no higher meaning than to spread it far and wide. A shattering shiver passes through the skeleton's body from toe to head, then back again. The cosmos agrees with you. Yes. Could it be? The I don't know my suggester. own meaning. This emptiness. No matter. Surely you cannot best me again. Tell me, Sally Smarty Pants. Oh, is there such thing as free will? <laughs> I say no. The gods guide our every move. I dare you to outsmart me now. Okay, this one is just the same course. Well, another mystic tack. Well, the skeleton hangs. Is there a difference between ah, right damn it. and wrong? The truth is that there is not. Only action and consequence. <laughs> oh ho! I got you there. But I mean, we can't have like three tacks, so... How to do that? You feel the bond break between your finger, in a doubt rips mm. through your mind. Such a pity. Weird. I just wonder if there's like a specific combination which allows you to use the tag twice. But we do not have many options. Soldier and outlaw? Go on, Ifan. Your time to shine. He pokes a you. Are you quick? The skeleton. A soul, but I'm sure. Oh, you re All right. His jaws clack nope. together. You tug and you. Let's. I say. Well, the skeleton. Is there a difference between the hardy you feel in a such a? Pi hmm. Ethan only just got one right. Um. Soldier and outlaw. Outlaw and scholar. A scholar also just gave us one. Noble and Barbarian. We can just have one more try. But I think this is just not going to work. And I don't really remember what I did differently in my first Let's Play, because I know that it worked back then. I wonder if we can, like, find out a true answer or something. But it also doesn't really tell, like, a next step. He pokes a fit. You found one right here. Are you quick? The skeleton. So, but I'm sure you re- All right. His jaws clack together yeah. in a show of self-assurance. So, the first one about the purpose in life. And these points to the scars that crisscross his flesh. Love is not about the marks you leave on others, but the ones they leave on you. A shattering shiver passes through the skeleton's body from toe Very to head. Very approach. Then, back again. The cosmos agrees with you. No mm -hmm. matter. I say, no. The gods guide our every move. Yeah, then I dare you to. We you lose. Or I hate. Don't hurt you. The last one we lose too. Such a I don't really know how to do this. Hmm. Oh well. I guess we can't really do something about that. He arrests Timus. Let's and see if there's something on his Ever may he look gravestone. Out upon the woods he loved so dear. A simpleton's idea of a clever man and a poor man's idea of a rich one. <laughs> oh well. Ah, uh, but I do want to end the quest. But I don't know how. We tried all the combinations. Well, not Sibyl, but 
we do know that Outlaw and Scholar won't work together. Oh, and we got another map, another tag. Dwarf friend. I guess because we held Lohar. 